Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is a battery endurance test of the Phoenix EO6R. Well, you've probably seen it before. Take the light out into the preserve, put it on its highest output level, and we see how it burns down over the course of the evening. Now, if memory serves, the ANSI FL1 runtime, which is the time it takes to burn to 10% of the original output level, is measured by Phoenix at uh, roughly an hour and 20 minutes. The burn down curve, again, this is under laboratory conditions, can be broken down into two parts, both of which have the same shape. That is a steady state output followed by a linear ramp down. Well, we'll see how that goes. The most important thing to me, and I think to a lot of other people, is to find out how useful the beam is for making your way across territory, and of course, for how long. It doesn't make any difference if it burns down to X lumens at Y minutes. You may think that that is or is not a useful amount but it always helps to see what it looks like under realistic circumstances. And of course, this helps us determine the performance envelope of the light. Well, enough of me babbling on. I know you want to see the field test. It's gonna take about another 40, 45 minutes and we'll get started. And we just got started. We are at the bridge but I'm actually looking out at the other side. This has a bit longer line of sight. I can get 45, 50 yards here pretty easily. And uh, this really helps show what the uh, EO6R can do on high. But of course, we're just getting started. So uh, I'll probably check back in in another four or five minutes. And time update, let me get my headlamp off and get things switched around here. All right, I think we've moved into the first ramp down. I'm looking a good 30, 32 yards over to the far side of the area across the creek and I it definitely appears that I've lost something so I believed we are well into that uh, initial ramp down and time update let me get everything switched around this is of course one of the trails I use most often for path following examples. It's really a wide open area. Now we do have some trees up here. And I can get enough downrange information to see well ahead what the slope of the terrain is. These little ridges that have been formed by rain wash areas that I might trip. Uh, this, for following a groomed path, in a wide open space. This is uh, still more than adequate. And here we are a little over three minutes later, uh, definitely a less even and rougher section of trail. But considering that this is a keychain style light, I still have the ability to get reasonable situational awareness. I've got, as of right now, very good downrange for this type of territory. Out at the old BJ grasslands, I'd probably have a completely different opinion. And back to the bridge, there's the time update we should be well into the steady state after the first step down or the first 
linear ramp down, I should say, uh, considerably less than when we started, I could pick up ice shine 50, 60 yards downrange pretty easily, but I can barely even determine what the contour of the ground is beyond the visible area of the creek here. But still, just for hiking, making my way back to where I started, um, this is still very useful illumination. And here we are about a minute and a half later. Of course, not as good as when we came through before, but I'm still not in danger of tripping or getting in any bad trouble. Definitely losing some downrange, but I could still work with this. And we've crossed an hour. This, by the way, is where I record most of the intros to product reviews here at Arbor Hills. Now, this is the same steady state that we saw in the previous two clips. Headlamp off, there is some minor lighting behind me. Now, if we believe the laboratory burn down curve, then once we hit that final linear ramp down, it should be pretty fast and aggressive. So I don't want to be caught somewhere out in the preserve and have a significant event and not have good comparative footage. So I'm just going to uh, leave the light in this position with this background. And if there's any change in this output, I'll be back for another segment. There's our time update, and about five or six seconds ago, we didn't have a linear ramp down. We had a very hard step down. And so uh, you can see where we are here. I'm guessing this is probably ANSI FL1 output, so it looks like we didn't quite make the uh, stated run time, but I'm forced to guesstimate on that, so just keep that in mind. I think I'll do my uh, next update, either when the warning light goes off or we reach exhaustion. And we just had a, another very tiny step down. Uh, this is not that much better than a cell phone. And about five seconds ago, the warning light came on. And subtract about six seconds from that. And that is our time to battery exhaustion. Well, exhaustion is interesting from an academic standpoint. Uh, for me personally, I'm more interested in how long could I maintain usable illumination. For here though, and for a lot of hiking terrain that you might encounter, I would say about an hour and five minutes. Now, this is going to be temperature dependent, of course, but uh, I would hope that by that time you're awfully close to getting back to where you started. Well, that's it for tonight, and until that next review, Thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.